but there's always them days where something just can trigger it. Bam. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it be a TV show, you with your kid last night, man. I remember my son when he was, you know, that. And it, it, when you were sitting there holding him, you know, I could see that, that bond, that, that, you know. And, I, and, you know, that was me and James, you know. So, I mean, for a moment there, even though you're taller than I am, and, you know, James had blonde hair. And, but just for a split second, boom, you know, that was me and, and James standing there. And um, seconds like that where I just have to take a deep breath and... But it's good to see. It's good to know yeah. you got support around you, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Turned from Iraq, November 26, 2012, he took his life. So like I said, this cloud is over top of you for, you know, some people it's years and years and years. But you got a choice. You either do something or you just die. And I want to die. In the beginning, and even now, you know, I got my mornings, I wake up early, I go to the garage, James's military stuff is up there on the shelf inside his boxes that came back from Iraq. And um, I'll have my moment, you know, and once that's over with, then I have to put that face on I'm the husband, the father, the protector, and everything else. And I go inside and I take care of everybody else. <laughs> well, after James passed away, I, I withdrew from everybody, my mm -hmm. family. And I could only relate to people that were walking on the road I was on, mm -hmm. you know, because it was so much easier to talk to them. Yeah. Whereas, with, like with my family, I had to explain everything. Little by little, you know, I've come out of that, that shell, mm -hmm. and with the help of these guys, you know, I, I break out of it a little bit yeah. more each day. I think the hardest mm -hmm. thing of all of it is having to see others, especially other families. You know, once they get on that road, they're lost. Yeah. You know, they don't know which way to turn. They don't know where resources are because it's just, it's just hard. You have the cloud, and um, that withdrawal is very common. Mm -hmm. A lot of, a lot of veterans, they'll just withdraw and not communicate yeah. with mm -hmm. folks. And there is no perfect situation. There is no perfect time to come out and say, "Hey, this is what I've got going on." Mm -hmm. you, the, there, there's no roadmap for this. Nobody knows, you know. Um, it, but you just got to take that chance. When your inside tells you, I got to get this out of me, you got to get it out. Mm -hmm. That's the healthy way to do it, mm -hmm. is to get rid of it, get it out there. For me, um, people often ask me, they're like, you know, why did you try to take your life? And it's been six times. It hasn't happened yet. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen. It's not. Well... See, that's the thing. That's the thing that gets me is that I can't tell you that it's not going to happen, but I know that, meaning peer to peer, meaning that if there is somebody somewhere that I know at any time I can get a hold yeah. of, that provides, if you will, a net. Whatever triggered my episode that I put my pistol to my head and was ready to do it was was ready to put that bullet in my head because I saw no other way out. And then, just as fast as I snapped into it, I, I luckily, I thank God, I snapped out of it. Mm -hmm. And I just, full mental breakdown, and I, I didn't know how I got there. Mm -hmm. And my brother showed up at my door. Mm -hmm. I mean, just as fast as he could. Well, thank God you, you know? shot. Thank God yeah. you showed up. We do a lot of different things, you know, from, you know, vets with PTSD, suicide, homeless, the dog, freaking people that just have problems or issues with depression or you know, anything, you know, and try to make them, you know, know that 
their damn life matters. A lot of a lot of vets, you know, they just get out of the military, and that in itself is is even with no combat. I mean, that in itself is trying to transition to the civilian world is like, oh my god, because mm -hmm. you got a sense mm -hmm. of purpose and you got a mission in the military. Now you get out and mm -hmm. look, you're just like the average Joe, mm -hmm. and you you have to find that. And see, that's what what we try to do, just like y'all, mm -hmm. try to give them service members, combat vet, non-combat vet that sense of mission, that sense of purpose and everything else like they had before. And once they find that, then it's like, it's like a railroad going through. Boom, I got it, I'm on it. How, how has been the community response from first from you um, on your mission and then from Scott? Well, with Scott, there was an outpouring of support. Uh, you know, what happened with that was, you know, he walked into a, a place of business called Simply Storage and just by chance was talking to August, which she's part of the Spartac Foundation, mm -hmm. and she gave him my card. Mm -hmm. And she called me and said that he'd be calling me, but he didn't call me for like a couple days, I guess. When I called him, you, you know, the first minute I just figured I was gonna get mouth speak. I just think figured I was gonna get chatter. And um, what I found was a resiliency that could, in, in his voice, and, and I took strength from that. He knew that he was gonna get into housing at some point in time, but there's so much red tape, it was unbelievable. Yeah. So um, I contacted one of my friends, her name's Wendy Childers, and her son was killed in action in Afghanistan. Mm. And she runs a nonprofit, and she sends care packages to Marines that are deployed all over the world. And she made a post about you know, what I was trying to do. And then from that point on, it just like blew up. It sort of like went community viral, I guess mm -hmm. you could say. So he got into his apartment, but I mean, he did the majority of the legwork himself. Mm -hmm. All right, and that's just, huge. He, yeah, he did, he did the majority of it. The only thing I was really there for was like moral support and I helped him with the red tape. At some point I had to learn that I needed to advocate for myself mm -hmm. and, and I needed to make the choices much like you had mentioned. Yeah, we're all pretty much recipients of the help that N22 you know, can, can definitely do, that's for sure, mm -hmm. through either given hour. I mean, they even, we've got some guys that go to yoga classes, yeah. and there's all different ways that help people, and not everyone can kind of be helped the same way, I guess. Mm -hmm. You have yeah. to find that niche. Oh, yeah, what, what it's helps not, you. it's never mm -hmm. one size fits all. Yeah. For a veteran that's in a self-destructed depression like I was in, it's just, it's great just to at least have somebody mm -hmm. to, to talk to, confide mm -hmm. in, that can kind of help steer yourself where you where you kind of need to be but that you know talking to a psychologist isn't necessarily like we were saying earlier the fix for every veteran yeah, yeah. but I could just say it's it's been great for me help but me get back one on thing given an hour is good for is a lot of active duty service members will not come forward because yeah. depending on their command it can be a career killer mm. so Outside given hour works really good all right for those active duty service members that don't come forward through the regular system because they don't want to kill their career, mm -hmm. so given hour works great because they can go get professional help on the outside. It'll be between them and, and it's outside of the military, mm -hmm. and you know, that is potentially a person that would take their life because they they didn't want to come forward. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, it's it's there's a whole bunch of resources. We are we're not trying to reinvent the wheel. I mean, all three of these guys here, you know, freaking they don't they don't know it, but in you know, they they are therapy, you know, for me. They help me move forward from yeah. day to day and and I get to help them you know yeah. through you know friendship and we stick together and you know mm -hmm. if we when we come across another vet mm -hmm. then instead of it just being me now you know you know Scott knows mm -hmm. more about one thing than what I do you know and Jeff knows more about this than what I do and same with James all right so now rather than just being me by myself now I got well there's more but these are three that are with me
like you were hitting the beaten path, trying to make some sort of a difference. And these guys here, they're part of the difference. They help me, I help them. So it's, it's all pretty cool.